Buongiorno, mi chiamo Helen and uh, welcome sirs and madams. Could all of you at the back please come and sit in the front? We have plenty of space. I've counted, we've got about 10 seats left. I am so excited to be here today. This is a sea change to last year. We have 250 seats and I've been countdown. How many people are coming in? How many people are sitting here? And I just want to thank you all. So just a quick survey before I start. Who here is a partner? Okay, very good. Who's here associate? Okay, all right. Who's here from a big firm? Okay, don't be modest, all right. Medium, and calls themselves sole practitioner or small firms. Okay, we have a wonderful range of people here. Now, have a look at this picture. Oh, let me allow myself to introduce myself. So my name's Helen Tong. I'm a new space legal futurist. I work with law firms. My background was in the battlefield of uh, litigation. And I work with startups and emerging technologies and space tech. So I'm an author for UNESCO on emerging technologies from 3D printing, um, nanotech, to unmanned systems, which I can talk to you a lot more later on. But the photo here, who knows where this is? Okay, there's no prize. It's Switzerland, lovely Alps. So I was there at Geneva, um, at the headquarters of the UN United Nations, and it was a whole discussion about AI and the application on um, rule of law and law of armed conflict. Now, for a moment, you might be wondering, what on earth has this got to do with anything? Well, the trend in AI is not limited to law, but the whole world. Manufacturing, industrial development, engineering, technology. And this is me standing before 500 engineers earlier this year in May talking about robotics, law and AI uh, in front of engineers. And there, these are some of the conferences that I'm taking part in. in the, um, I'll be going to Helsinki, speaking to C-suite executives and also um, robotics, mainly with developers. So some of the questions I'd like to pose for you to consider when you're thinking about legal tech is what kind of features do you envisage? Obviously, we have a huge range of law firms and individuals in this room. What are your values, as indicated before? And what kind of firm? And what does it mean to be successful in 2060? You will see I'm going to have a running theme for my talk, and it's space. Space as an inspiration, and also space to look into the future of where we want to go. My colleagues before spoke to you about legal tech, and there is no doubt in my mind, you're Germany, France, Singapore, the whole world is blossoming in terms of legal tech. And it may be no surprise to you, it is very much hand in hand with the sort of startup mentality of doing hackathons, of coming together, creating ideas. We even have innovation awards, even have the ABA setting up innovation centers. And what you see is that a lot of law firms are also developing their own innovation or, you know, small section of legal tech. But what I really want to ask you is, let's look at a different example. Let's just go a little bit back and look at space and ask ourselves, now, who remembered um, that moment when Elon Musk sent a car up to space or saw news? Okay, a few of you. Now, my question is, why did Elon Musk do that? Right? Is it a marketing plot? What is it? My bigger question is actually, what is the message behind it? Is he a visionary? Who do you think who thinks he's a visionary? Okay, who thinks he's just a bit crazy? He's a bit of both. Right? Are you a visionary? And what is the potential? I think what Elon Musk is posing is the potential of what you can do. And now I want to think ahead and share with you a video to get you a bit inspired about legal tech, but again, I'm using space. And it's with the concept of uh, legal futures.
ready to go. Okay, so now you've all seen the other thing that Elon Musk did, right? He's basically signed up one of the richest men in, I think, Japan to go around the moon, right? And he, um, that, that million or billionaire, is taking seven artists with him. Now, this might seem a little bit far fetched for you guys, but just bear with me for a moment. To give you an idea, about a year ago, I was traveling and I took part in a program called Singularity. I launched a satellite propulsion startup. I was based at NASA Research Park, and this summer I deep dived into space. I studied engineering, space science, um, human space flight. I went to visit the German um, uh, Every Space Center where you train your astronauts. And um, I talk space now. I'm part of the space sector as a space lawyer. And what I want to show you is what do you see here? You see some satellites, um, or do you see opportunities? Do you see partnerships, contracts, businesses, relationships? How many of you here don't have a mobile phone? Exactly. Every single one of you probably possess at least one mobile phone. Now, did you know every single one of your mobile phone is linked to one of these satellites up there? Well, not specifically here. My point is half the world has mobile phones. The other half does not. Do you see where I'm getting at? There is business to be made. And actually, one of the things that really surprises a lot of people is the space business is a, you know, a million dollar business. But all the people in space, so the trillion dollar business is actually up in space. Now, I'm a member of the Moon Village Association, which I just showed you. And I launched a competition called the New Space 2060 International Moon Pitch Competition, which I am receiving entries right now. If you have an idea of going to the moon or doing something on the moon, then please talk to me afterwards. But this is the idea. This organization was set up by ex-ESA, ex-NASA people, the very experts who took us to the moon 50 years ago. But the problem that they're facing after 50 years is it's not happening. So they call the private sector to come here. Now, how is this relevant? In the same line as legal tech, I worked for eight years, at least eight to about 10 years now, on autonomous systems, the legal issues of autonomous cars, autonomous ships. And about eight years ago, I couldn't have a conversation with any single lawyer because they didn't understand what I was doing. But now they can, because now they see Google cars on the road. They say, wait a second, yes, I get that. That's an RTA case, that's a litigation matter, or that's a matter we can invest in. So I guess what I'm trying to say is there are huge legal questions coming out in the development of space. I work with space startups, and as of um, November this year, I'm going to Japan as part of a Minerva Fellow to look at EU-Japan collaborative opportunities in the world of new space. New space being no different from legal tech, um, startups that have ideas that they want to bring to Earth to go to space. And so how does, that, how does that all fit in with this idea of legal tech? I think it's very, very relevant. When I go and train entrepreneurs, I tell them this. I look at legal tech as in the middle, I look at space tech as a bit further out, and I look at currently our knowledge here. So there is a gap that needs to be bridged. But I'll give you a different example. Is it harder to try and understand legal tech, or is it harder to climb a mountain, or to go to the moon? <laughs> Clearly, it's hardest probably to go to the moon, which when you put it into perspective, legal tech is really not that hard. It's simply an idea of we're all learning, we're all getting our heads around what's going on. In the same way we're talking about blockchain, in the same way we're talking about emerging technologies, I don't know any more than you do, except maybe I might spend more time with the startup teams and you know discussing the ideas, but we're all in the same boat to understand these technologies and tools and say, wait a moment, how can they actually make our lives easier? How can they actually create new jobs and create a new field, a new role that we may have never envisaged? When you looked at those images of the moon, there are gonna be new roles and new jobs are gonna be created that we haven't even thought about. And what is exciting is, um, if you look at the legislation right now, there's something called asteroid mining. How, how many of you have heard of that? Okay, so some of you are, are sort of in line with me. And when the Luxembourg government launched this, a numerous companies got set up, um, some of which I work with, on asteroid mining. In theory, under international law, if you're a state, it might be illegal. But if you're a company, there's nothing to say you can't go to an asteroid, mine it, the resources, and bring it down to Earth. This is really far-fetched, but the idea is to provoke you to think, wait a second, legal tech is really a golden opportunity where we can change the way we work in a way that we never have in the past. And it is everyone is a stakeholder, everyone has a role to play, and so I really want to invite you and look at it that way. 
This man, everyone knows, Einstein. So how does he come into the picture? So here's a lot of theories, and whether it's science or in law or in maths and quantum physics, but one of the things I came to understand is Einstein's theory is very much sort of like what you put in is what you get out. And I work with a lot of firms who are currently struggling internally because they can't implement the technology that's before them, but they desire that. So the effort to actually understand what's happening within the firm or the organization or the change that you're trying to encounter or embrace is very much part of accepting that change um, in totality as well. So thank you very much for your time.